What's going on my ASVAB party people? Anderson here, your ASVAB coach, and I got a question for you. Have you ever looked at a word problem and known that you have to make an equation to get something going, but you have no idea how to set the equation up? Or better yet, you study your keywords, you know all your keywords, and then when you actually look at the problem, you're like, okay, this keyword means that. I know that for sure, but doesn't quite turn out the right way. So again, I'm Anderson, your ASVAB coach. I'm gonna show you how to take this word problem here and create the correct equation to go ahead and actually solve this problem. And that's what today's class is all about. So if you're watching this video the day it came out, I'm hosting a class tonight at 6 p.m. Eastern to help everybody out in terms of making sure that we can take complicated text like that and turn it into the correct answer right here. So the All Access program is how you're gonna join the class. If you didn't know about my All Access program, long story short, it's how my students raise their scores and get the jobs they want. We do this because there's three main ways that you get to learn. One, you get to join the classes and get the recordings even if you can't make it. Number two, you get to go ahead and text me whenever you need help. You're gonna have support from me and my other coaches and staff to help you make sure that you're on the right track, you're on this right study schedule, you're doing the right things, and help you stay motivated all the way through. And number three, who doesn't like thousands of extra practice problems with video solutions to make sure that you understand step-by-step -step every mistake you make and build that confidence that you need to really lower that test anxiety. So if you need a guide, if you need a plan, and you wanna get things done, then look no further than the All Access program. There's a link in the description of this video, or you can go to duranlearning.com and then click the All Access program right there up top. But without further ado, let's go ahead and get started, but check that out and also make sure to like and subscribe to this channel if you like what you see. So let's go ahead and get started here. All right, so first things first. You know, we have all this text over here, but there's never, ever, ever a good reason to read all the text first, never is. The best way to start a problem, especially if you know you need to create an equation, is to start with a question. You need to know what that variable, that X, you need to know what that means. So let's go ahead and start off with the question itself, right here. Which of the following equations could be used to solve for Garrett's most recent paycheck? Okay, sounds good, right there. So Garrett's most recent paycheck. That's what X equals. X equals Garrett's paycheck. All right, sounds good. Let's write that out. Garrett's paycheck. Bam. Cool. So now that I have that, my next goal here is going to be to understand how this plays a part in the situation that I have all the way up here. So we have to take it nice and slow here. But let's get this done one step at a time here. Let's understand the situation, understand the story in English, and then translate it into math. Follow along. So here we go. So Garrett needs this much money to purchase materials for a home improvement project. Notice I didn't care to read the whole number. Not really that important. Just know that the 4,000 number, that means that's what Garrett needs for the home improvement project. So let's write that down. Let's write that down right here. So boom. So needs all that money right there. Whatever that number is, 442583. All right, whatever. So. First things first, I understand that whatever we're talking about, you know, well, really what we're talking about is, you know, Garrett's pay, we're talking about money. We know that at the end of the day, that's the, the total amount. That's what this needs to add up to. Cool. Now let's go ahead and keep understanding this. He withdraws 2,500 from his savings account and sets aside 17% of his most recent paycheck to meet the cost of the materials. Okay, so what is it that we're doing again? Again, we're trying to get $4,400 so that way Garrett can go ahead and, you know, use that money for his home improvement project, whatever. Garrett needs to improve his house. He needs this much money. He took out $2,500 from the bank right here. So withdraws $2,500. Now you tell me, doesn't withdraw $2,500 sound like we're subtracting $2,500? Well, you have to think about the totality of the situation here. So pause right here and comment on this video if this is what surprised you. But a lot of the times we think withdrawal means subtract. But think about the situation. We're trying to get this much money. He takes 2,500 from savings. So that's savings from his savings. And then what he also does, again, pay attention to this fully, and sets aside 17% of his most recent paycheck. So he takes 2,500 plus 
17% of the paycheck. And that total is what gets you to the $4,425.83. So let's understand the story in English. We're trying to get to the $4,000 for the home improvement project. Garrett does two things to make this happen. He takes 2,500 from his savings and he takes 17% of his most recent paycheck. Those two combined, doesn't make sense here, doesn't make sense that those two combined is what gives you the $4,000. I hope that makes sense in English, but too many times, too often, a lot of us are so fixated on just looking for one keyword that we understand. Oh, withdraw. Withdraw means subtract. Well, yes, it means subtract from your bank account, but the situation is not about his bank account. The situation is about achieving $4,400. So the end result, the goal is the $4,400. That's the goal. And we get there by adding up right here, the savings and the 17% of the paycheck. That's what it's going to be. You add the 17% of the paycheck with the $2,500 and you get the $4,000. Is that starting to make a little more sense now? So in English, take a look at our answer choices. Our answer choices, what do they say? Here we have the 17 for the paycheck minus all of this, minus all of the money he needs. That doesn't quite make too much sense, does it? And then we achieve 2,500 with, no, doesn't quite make sense. So A is out of the picture. Let's take a look at B and C. So here's B, let's tell a story with B. The story with B is this, we have well, why is it 0.17x? Well, think of it like this, 17% of paycheck. Isn't it true that when you have a percent, you gotta turn it to a decimal? Yeah, so doesn't this right over here, doesn't that turn into 0.17 of means multiply and then paycheck? Oh yes, oh yes, 0 0.7, 0 0.17 times the paycheck, which remember, the paycheck is right here. That's X. So we would have 0.17 X. Oh, look at that. So that's the 17% of his paycheck. We add that with right over here, the savings. We add that with the savings and we achieve that totality of the $4,000. That's B. B makes sense. Think of it right there. You take 17% of that recent paycheck, add it together with the $2,500, Together, that makes the money that Garrett needs for that project. And boom, there it is. And so this is the art of turning English into math. You can't just look at one keyword. You have to look at the keyword compared to the totality of the situation. And that's a very tough task, especially if we're still getting used to working with variables and writing equations to begin with. So that's why today's class, if you can join, it's all about making sure that we can sort through the story and understand the story in the sense of mathematics. That's really what this is about with arithmetic reasoning. Every single problem you do is gonna depend on your ability to take the English and turn it into math. And so, if you look at C, C is incorrect because of this. C is incorrect because you see that we have the 17% of the paycheck minus 2,500. We're not talking about the difference between his paycheck and his withdrawal from the savings. No, we're not talking about that. We're talking about adding 17% of the paycheck with his savings to get that 4,000. That's B still, that's B. And so if you take a look at D, this doesn't make sense either because you're saying 17% of his paycheck plus the 2,500? That doesn't make sense because we're only taking 17% of the paycheck. We're not taking 17% of the 2,500 because remember, here you're, you'd be distributing here. And I'm not distributing 17% of the 2,500, no. It's just 17% of the paycheck. So no parentheses are needed here. If they would have said, hey, Garrett's saving 17% of the combined amount of his paycheck and the 2,500, for sure. That's where that parentheses would come in. But in this case, nope, not gonna work out. And so that's why B is gonna be the solid answer here. Absolute solid answer. But I wanna make sure again, my part of people that we understand that the ASVAB is not just about doing math, it's about translating English to math as well. That way we have a solid footing and grounding in terms of how we're gonna solve a problem and ensure that we have the right answer at the end of the day. And so, my name is Anderson Knight, I'm your ASVAB coach as always. Remember, the All Access program, you gotta make sure you have the materials you need to pass and get the score you want. So if you're still watching right now, 
Here's my phone number. My phone number is right over here. Let me go ahead and put that up. My phone number is 567-698-8867. Right there, right there. So make sure to shoot me a text or go to the link in the description of this video. Click that link for the program. Watch the video on how it works. Text me if you have any questions, but go ahead and sign up. Let's make sure you get the score you want and that job you deserve. It starts with us right here, right now. I'll see you in the next video, my party people. Let's keep having fun and let's ace the ASVAB.